Now I will try to explain how do reptilians shapeshift to the best of my understanding cause it is FAQ on the part of my subscribers. I don't think they are all evil. Mostly because I suspect that many of them don't even know they are reptilians, and the reason they are not being told is because is that if they were told then they would. Since they have consciousness, reconsider doing to people, whatever is that they are unintentionally doing to them through their work. I don't think that they even know that they occasionally show reptilian slits, fangs or claw-type hands and fingers. I think someone else is exposing them without their knowledge to punish them for some small misdemeanors, and their subconscious mind picks on that. I don't even know how they did that to me as well. Or how they prevent me from shapeshifting completely to reptilian form. Do I have some nanobots swimming through my bloodstream that deliver some kind of chemical compound to every cell in my body? Do those nanobots even have the ability to self-replicate from existing materials within the body and to produce those chemicals needed for me to stay in human form from existing materials in my body? It's needless to say, but they are hundreds of thousands of years, if not more, ahead of humans in technology. They are probably according to that scale, the Kardashev scale, that Michio Kaku. Japanese astrophysicist talks about all the time, civilization type 4, while the people are civilization type 0. Type 4 means that they have warp drive, that enables them to travel faster than light and that they can harvest energy of their own as sun, or at least I think that that's what it means. When they become civilization type 6 they will be even able to time travel and control space, or I think. But if they can possess other physical being from the fifth dimension, being at the same spot the other 3D being is at, and occasionally even glimpses of them can be seen through that 3D character, I guess they already kind of control the space, don't they? But they are kind of selfish, can't find other food but humans, while having all that power. Maybe, the scale is not right or has overlooked some important detail, factor. There is this dual nature of reality, everything is both matter, solid form, atom, and a wave frequency. So I guess it wouldn't really matter at the end if they're changing the chemistry of their body, by adding some chemical substances in the bloodstream via the means of nanobots. For which nanobots find raw materials all around the body, like those Mars robots find everything on Mars, needed for their fuel and repair, and for doing some terraforming. And then that makes them totally different physical beings for a part-time, cause different beings a different chemistry. All those nanobots act in the body as a retrovirus with help of which they then inject new DNA into parts of their DNA chain and that way make their RNA synthesize different proteins into their body while interpreting DNA, than it otherwise would, and that way make themselves look human for a longer period of time, until they change their DNA again. Or it could be just a projection of wave patterns on that particular place in time, causing the chemistry to change in the process with the help of waves. Because waves and chemistry are interchangeable, but then they would need a projector and a background to project to, too. Maybe background is not such a problem, but projector certainly is. By the way, I don't think moon does it, I don't think that it's a hologram of projecting holograms. But, I am definitely more inclined to believe that they shapeshift by means of manipulating matter, and not the waves, because I think it is more doable, and I think they use hologram when possible, like, for an example, when in TV studio, to patch up some errors in nanobot shapeshifting chemistry-based technology, together with tinkering, photoshopping of the photos in that video later on. 
Okay, and now something about extra three-dimensional possession. Second most FAQ. I think that happens in some cases. I think that some of the original reptilians that came to Earth are exactly that, 100%. Full-blooded reptilians from another planet, and that they can't survive in Earth's atmosphere, so they need host bodies, an aristocratic offspring. The Blue Bloods serve for the purpose since they are hybrids of them and Homo sapiens, with biggest amount of their genetics among humans. They possess them in the youth, around three, I think. But only the fragment of their personality, devised only for that specific purpose. All aristocrats are, by the way, programmable multiples, created such through trauma-based mind control ritual abuse. But, there are many of the second tier living among common folks where they were deliberately planted to do the bidding for the reptilians, to be leaders of different civic movements, for example, or they are simply their bastard children with peasant women. They are able to stay human thanks to nanobot technology, I already explained, or if they drink human blood, or something similar, eat human flesh. Thanks to small percentage of human genetics in comparison to the full bloods, but, let's be clear, bigger than the reptilian part, by the way, royals that are possessed are reptilians to the greater degree than the second tier, as I already said. But their consciousness has to be sacrificed, unfortunately for them, in order for Archon to live in that body. They were purposefully genetically engineered as such. They try to get closer to second tier, who are those half-breeds, who are not always aware that they are one, through time, and try to get them to work for them. But it might be, that they turn those part reptiles, part humans in complete reptilians after their death, after they reanimate their already dead bodies, so the legends about vampires comes from them. They use human body as a cocoon for their reptilian body, and they achieve metamorphosis after death, but only if contaminated with reptilian blood. I think they have to both allow the reptilian to take a sip of their blood and to taste reptilian blood, or the nanobots can do that, too, at any point in their lives. So they don't have to drink human blood if they don't want to, they do it mostly for ritual purposes to traumatize their human slaves. That watch them while they devour other humans or just drink their blood, and that way cause the people watching to go into the state of dissociation, so they can remain multiples and be programmed for various tasks. I also think that many of the second tier are not aware of this fact, that they don't have to drink human blood, that there is a technology, like nanobots that could manufacture those substances into their bloodstream, but they are kept in dark, cause otherwise they wouldn't attack humans and traumatize them. Not only royals, and second tier, but also human trolls that serve them are multiples, too. Reptilians are all over the place, especially around people that are their hybrid reptilian offspring. Cause on Earth only hybrid reptilians have bodies. Or are allowed to have one, and thus can procreate, or clones of their old hybrid reptilian buddies, who, in the process of reincarnation, forgot all they knew in their previous lives. Or there are old reptilian buddies, who are only awareness, that is spirits, since they are prohibited to own their own body, who were incarnated into newborn body of some sacrificed first-tier reptilian, by the means of possession.